central London. Over to you, Spencer. Hi there. And welcome to our robot lair. Throughout the day, we're going to be bringing you live coverage of lots of robots here. You can see them scattered around. Some of them are actually working at the moment. I accidentally kicked the plug out of the wall, so one of them went down earlier. And later, we're even going to have some live cooking by artificial intelligence. Don't worry, that man is a human, but the recipe has been designed by an artificially intelligent machine. We're going to start, though, with possibly the most recognisable humanoid robot. This is Artie, the robo thespian. He is a performer. And here's a sample of what he can do. Oh, yes, Master Luke. Remember that I'm fluent in over six million forms of communication. They're using a very primitive dialect. But I do believe they think I am some sort of god. I beg your pardon, General Solo, but that just wouldn't be proper. It's against my programming to impersonate a deity. And if you don't recognise the movie, you can't be in my gang. Now, Artie's current overlord is Nigel Crook from Oxford Brooks University. Um, Nigel, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for bringing Artie. He is chained to the floor as well, which I see as slightly menacing. But um, <laughs> he's a performer. He's even done stand-up comedy, hasn't he? Yes, he's done three nights in London at a comedy club. OK. And what is the point of Artie, then? So Artie has uh, been designed to entertain and to educate the public. Uh, he's, he's been put in museums and exhi exhibits to talk about the exhibition and to draw people in. And, and I guess to remove people's fear and nervousness about technology and robotics. Yeah, exactly. He's a very friendly and approachable robot. Um, to what extent is he an intelligent machine? He's not very intelligent at all, I'm afraid. Oh, I don't listen to the Martin. <laughs> uh, he can do some simple sensing, so he can sense, detect your face and recognise your gender and your emotion from that. He can follow a target. But other than that, all his actions are pre-programmed. Cue the first live demonstration of the morning. Anything could happen. Artie's about to guess my age, my gender and my mood, although anyone on click will tell you that's always miserable. So, I'm going to stand here. Come on, Artie. Look into my eyes and keep still. I would say you are a 12-year-old boy. Your face is sad. For obvious reasons, actually, so they're completely accurate. And just to, uh, just to prove it does do different uh, descriptions, we're going to get Nigel to stand there as well. Honestly, the BBC, the reporters are getting younger and younger. Right, let's see Look what I think. Look into my eyes and keep still. I would say you are a 21-year-old man. Your face is happy. I think you've fake that to look good on TV. <laughs> Honestly not. So what you've seen there is something that we see a lot on Click. If there's a problem with the sensors, you know, if the, if the robot or the computer can't properly perceive the world around it, all the thinking that goes on behind that kind of goes out the window. I mean, the, the sensors are a real problem for this they kind are. of technology. Yes, yes, they are. And uh, there's a long way to go yet. But there are new technologies coming online that use sensors and use algorithms in an optimised way to try and extract as much information as reliably as possible. Uh, very briefly, there's a lot of talk about artificial intelligence putting people out of work. Yeah. Um, how worried should people be about being displaced by something that might, in the end, be, be better at the job? Well, history tells us that although um, robots have been used in factories and AI have been, has been moved into um, organisations, that jobs are, are generally displaced rather than removed. So, um, for example, when the car industry first started to use robots on the, on the shop floor, um, all those employees were retrained within the company because the company was more productive, it was more efficient, uh, and, and there was more work to be done. OK, Nigel, thank you very much for your time. Artie, thank you very much for you. I'm going to have a word about my contract because I think we need to alter my date of birth, if nothing else. Um, back to the studio. Spencer, thanks very much.